Hi everyone, my name is Joshua and welcome to Northern Solar. In this video we're going to look at May 2022, which is our second month of solar panels. For those of you who didn't see the video last month, we have 20 solar panels on our roof now, 10 on the east pitch and 10 on the west pitch. Each of the panels is a 400 watt panel, giving us a total of 8 kilowatt peaks for our system. These feed into a Solar Edge SE6000 inverter. On the 1st of May, we had our battery system installed, which is two 6.5 kilowatt hour batteries, giving us a total of 13 kilowatt hours of storage. And these are connected to a GrowWatt SPA3000 inverter, which monitors and controls the usage from the solar panels, the battery, and the grid. Let's get straight into it and look at the figures from this month. This is the website where we can see the production from our solar panels across the month of May on a day-by-day -day basis. As you can see, we've produced 903 kilowatt hours across the month of May, compared to just 812 last month. You can see there's a lot of variation day to day depending on the weather. We had four really quite sunny days where we produced over 40 kilowatt hours in a day. And our best day was the 14th where we produced 46.47 kilowatt hours. That compares with the lowest day, which was 15.3 right at the beginning of the month. So as you can see, we didn't have many really bad days mostly between 20 and say 30, 35. So on the whole, pretty good. So on average across May, if you take 903 kilowatt hours total, divide it by 31 days, we worked out at just over 29 kilowatt hours per day. So let's look in a bit more detail at our production and consumption. So like I said, we produced 903 kilowatt hours for May. We exported 467 of those to the grid we consumed 436 from the solar panels and the battery, and only 16.1 kilowatt hours from the grid. Almost all of which was topping the car up overnight when we needed it to be full in the morning. So if you add up our grid consumption and our self-consumption, you get total consumption for May was 452.1 kilowatt hours. As you can see, that's quite a bit more than last month at 392, but most of this is down to us charging the car more during the day at home. So this is a really interesting comparison now you can see now that we have the battery, we're able to consume a lot more of what we generate by moving that generation into parts of the day where there isn't any solar available. So evenings and first thing in the morning, we can have the kettle, the toaster, the cooker, whatever we need to be on, and we're not using anything off the grid at that point. So scrolling down a little bit further, you can now see the difference in our usage. 96.45% of our usage of electricity comes from the solar and the battery and only 3.55% comes from the grid. When you compare that to last month, you can really see the impact the battery has had. Where last month we were still having to draw almost 50% from the grid, even though we had solar panels. So the main thing that everyone's interested in is the financials. So let me scroll down and look at our comparisons for this month. So our standing charge for the month is £14.78. The very small amount that we drew from the grid is £4.46 which means our total electricity cost was £19.24 for the month. Our export payments for the month are £26.85 on our measly 5.57p per unit that we get. So actually our net electricity cost is minus 7.61. That means the bulb, our energy provider, this month owes £7.61. If we'd had no solar panels and no battery, our electricity usage would be completely from the grid and that this month would have cost us a whopping £126.77. So adding these two together, we get our total savings for the month of £134.38. Anyone watching last month may have noticed that the monthly savings that I quoted last month of £101, I think it was, was slightly wrong. I did actually miscalculate the electricity cost um, for last month. So we actually only saved £85.45 per month. This goes to show just how much the batteries improved things. We saved nearly 60% more this month than last month. So our cumulative savings since we've had the solar panels installed, £219.83. So this month, having our solar panels and batteries has saved us £134. Now obviously the solar panels aren't free and it's still gonna take us around about eight years to pay back the initial investment that we made to put the panels and the battery system in. But to answer the question, are solar panels worth it? So far, for us, definitely yes. Also, if you've got any comments or anything that I might have done wrong, any mistakes you might have spotted, please do point them out. I'm still learning here. and looking forward to learning how to get the most out of our system through the summer and then again later in the year. And if you've got solar panels at your house, please do let us know how you're getting on with those. How did you do in May? 
Right, that'll do for now. Thanks everyone. See you next time.